The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Now, toll free at 1 927 6648 or internationally at 727 873 7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the April 8th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. We need to make that one little two by four shift. It means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past one o'clock in the afternoon, I want you to know I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial them, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question, just like Mike did here a few minutes ago. Uh, and, of course, if you're inside the Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on a fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we've got a bit of a mixed bag out here. The Dow's up 282, nine tenths of a percent. S&P three tenths or 13 points. NASDAQ is down a half a percent, 72 points. Russell is up three points, so basically flat. Some eyes are off 41 and a quarter percent. Trannies are down 81, and six tenths of a percent. You've got uh, gold trading up five bucks, 1943 is the print there. Light speed crude is trading out at 96.68. That's up 65 cents. And silver is up three pennies, trading out at 24.77. Lead the charge dollar wise, the upside. You got EPAM Systems, 33 bucks, 13 percent. You've got regenerative pharmaceuticals up 23 bucks or 3%. Aberdeen Physical Palladium shares up 8% or 15 bucks. WD40 up 15 bucks, 9%. To the downside, it is the googly one up $27. That's a 1% move. Shopify's off 25. That's a 4% move. Amazon is down. Eight tenths of a percent or 25 bucks. Tesla's off 18, nearly 2%. Monolithic power systems down 16 bucks, 3.7% to the downside. Where do we want to begin? Where do we want to begin? I think we will begin with the Dow. Why the Dow? It's a good question. So when we take a look at the Dow out here, what we're going to do is uh, flop, uh, pip, uh, I'm going to eventually learn how to speak, and then what we're going to do is actually put the daily time frame equity future contracts up here, and it's really the Dow that we're paying attention to right now. So the Dow, as we take a look at it, number one, it's above the center of its bullish structured profile, which is at 34,641. So if price closes above that, which is also above its green oscillator and change line, that would be a bullish message. And the bullish message there would be price should go make a run for the 35, 281, 35, 244 level. That's a TD9 count breakdown area, and it's the top of its uh, current profile out there. So the Dow looks pretty good. Now, when I shorten this up and we take a look at the uh, other charts out here, good, take a look at the NQ. Well, in the case of the NQ, it's just finding support at the bottom of its profile, but resistance at its green oscillator and change line. So the question is, will the Dow be able to move higher without the NQ? Sure, it can move somewhat higher, but it's going to make that move to 35,281. Probably not. If we take a look at the ES Mini, she is also trading at resistance. That happens to be its green oscillator and change line and the center of its profile. The center of its profile is at 45,12. Uh, the oscillator and change line is printing out at... Uh, 45, I'll take that back. 45.12 is, yeah, 45.12 is the center of the profile. 45.12 is the oscillator and change line. We're putting out at 45.08. So what's the number you want to pay attention to today? 45.12. Price closes above that, gets us to the 45.51 level. We don't have that signal right now. 
But the Dow is trying to get the other guys to participate, including the Russell 2000. Now, getting the Russell 2000 to participate should be a relatively easy thing. And the reason is because that oscillator and change line went from green to red yesterday. Now, we we'll have a bottoming signal here, but certainly price and that line want to test each other. And the Dow could certainly lift us higher. But it's only the Dow that is breaking out above resistance levels. It's not taking place inside the ES or the NQ, and most certainly it is not taking place inside the Russell 2000. So where do we go from here? Excellent question. I say let's go back to the black background charts, because what we want to understand is what is the Dow doing? Now, I can share with you that earlier I was looking at my intraday charts for the Dow Equity Future contract, and really for all of them, and I didn't see any kind of signal as to why did price stop where it did. So when that happens, then Stevie goes back and takes a look at retracement. So let's just do this here. Let me kind of clear the screen just a tad. We'll go ahead and put all this stuff in here for you. Just take a look at what it is that I'm looking at. So now this is a 60-minute uh, chart for the uh, Dow. Uh, like, the, uh, uh, like some of the other instruments, it formed a nice uh, buy the D point bottom out here. And if we take a look at the typical, so when you have a Gartley buy pattern, Gartley buy patterns, what has been uh, generated out here? Gartley buy patterns have five different potential outcomes. The first four, really the first three, are retracements. So let's take a look at those first three outcomes. And you're going from the A to the D point out there, which means we're going from 35,281 down to 34,093. Well, when we take a look at the first move, the first move was the 0.382 retracement. And that found resistance at about 2 o'clock in the afternoon yesterday. And then just simply price went sideways. You can see that the second level, the 0.618, so here I, I mentioned there's five different outcomes. The first three are retracements, 0.382, well, that already took place. 0.618, that took place uh, just a, a while ago, an hour ago, as we came on to there, as we were coming on to the air, really before that at one o'clock so during that one o'clock bar price got up the actual high so far in the uh, dow equity future contract is 34.791 price got up to and the 618 retracement is 34.827 close enough for our work out here now the point that i want to make is what do you think the odds if the dow equity future contract closes above 34.827 what do you think the odds are that it's going to make the run to that third level the third level being the 0.786 retracement area and that would be at 35.026 i'd say the odds are pretty good now if we take a look at other patterns out here there's an a to b equals cd to the upside it has not been completed the a to b equals cd pattern to the upside would look like this we're going to start with the low out here that we use for our retracement level that's from 10 o'clock on april 7 that's our a point now for the b point you can't choose this swing point right here from three o'clock yesterday afternoon april 7. And the reason is because you you can clearly see what we're going to use for our c point and that's the low of the morning the reason why you can't use this swing point high here is because there's a higher swing point that took place before that low was created. So our C point out here for the A to B equals C, or our B point for the A to B equals CD, is going to be the uh, high at uh, 4 a.m. this morning. And our C point is going to be the low that took place at 9 o'clock. Now, what you can see here, the retracement on that A to B equals CD pattern is a 52% retracement. So relatively strong. Price along the, is along the left side of the C to D leg, so that's pretty strong. And that says that in a one-to-one -one price projection would get you to 34,943. So you've confirmed it on a 30-minute basis with regard to volume. You've got certainly the wide-ranging bar. Price stopped where it did, nearly where it, where it should have, at the 0.618 retracement level. And it's just trading sideways right now. So here's the point. The point is you've got a confirmed A to B equals CD that should take price up to 35,026 or so. Uh, but you've got to be watching 34,827 for clues. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We get back from this break. Let's start answering questions. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. 
Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, let's go north along the coastline of Florida up to uh, Palm Harbor and uh, speak with Jim. Jim, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? I'm doing good, Steve. Thanks for taking my call. How are you today? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. And always glad to hear from you. And I know you want to take a look at UPS, United Parcel Service out there. Uh, tell me what you're doing, how I can best help you. I'm not in it. I've just been watching it for a while. And uh, I have a uh, what I call a VPOC. Uh, it's based on uh, a version of uh, uh, market profile, and uh, it goes all the way back to October 13th, an untouched uh, VPOC at 183.81. And I was hoping it would get down to that today, but uh, it fell short of that a little bit. And I was just wondering, get your analysis on it and see if you think it's going to go a little lower or do you think the the bottom in the ups might be getting close <laughs> so i i tell you uh it's a, it's a great question here's what the charts are telling us one it's uh understandable why price has found support where it is and that's just simply because it's right at the bottom of a new monthly profile that formed this month jim and that level is 188.45 now is that good enough to say that it's bottom no it's good enough to say and understand why did price, in essence, uh, bottom the way that it has today. And the only thing that shows up on my black background screens, that is, would be that support level. I'll switch over. We can see the price is below the uh, bottom of its weekly bullish structured profile, and that suggests lower price. Um, you've got an A to B equals C D to the downside on the daily time frame uh, we can see that the uh, c to d leg is much stronger than the a to b leg so more likely than not this is not going to complete a one-to-one -one, even though it's made that move it is likely going to be more than a one-to-one -one a to b equals cd to the downside the next level price projection area would be 179 bucks any questions about the black background chart before i flip over to the white ones 
No, that's good. Thank you. Perfect. So let's go take a look at those white background multi-time frame screens out here and see what additional information we might be able to pick out of it. The very first thing uh, we can see on the uh, monthly time frame, we've got a road momentum indicator top at this stage here. Weekly, nothing more to add than what we looked at. Only bar number seven of a TD9 count. So I would suggest that if this is going to bottom, uh, you'd like to uh, either get a bullish reversal candle to confirm the A to B equals CD, or most certainly uh, you could be looking at a bottom that might form between Monday and Wednesday of next week. Preferably, you'd really get both patterns. You'd get a confirmed by the D point out there. And if you do, then that would signal to us that price would likely make a move up to its oscillator and change line in the 204 area. If I look at a 195 minute chart, it negated a TD9 count bottom. That suggests lower price. Looks like the 130 minute time frame chart did the same thing. The 65 minute chart says I want to bounce. I want to bounce up to maybe 193, 194. Uh, the 30-minute chart not helping me out a whole lot here um what it, what questions do these charts pose to you really you've answered about everything already i i was just wondering does uh in your work does uh 183.81 stand out in any way as a level <laughs> because i'm kind of experimenting with some things sure so that's a great question and I'm going to try to answer it. I'm going to open up the daily time frame chart, see if there's a breakout level. So the next breakout level to the downside for UPS would be 179.68. As far as a 183 level, if I'm, going to, I'm just looking on my other charts to see what, what I've got around 183. And uh, the only thing I've got around 183, I've got 184.06. Uh, 184.93, which is the high from the trading session of October 13th. So, um, so I don't have that. Uh, but maybe what you're able to do is combine that along with maybe a TD9 count bottom that could form between Monday and Wednesday of next week. And maybe that's how you put that together with that new tool that you're using. Yeah, that that works really well. The uh, 184 number you gave me because I, I've got like what a, a demand zone around my what I'm calling the VPOC. And okay. it goes from 183.04 up to uh, 185, say. So that, okay. that's in the demand zone that I'm looking for a, a, a bottom or a bounce. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, yeah, so I, I think, uh, so, so what I would do is, I, I, do I see a bottom right now today in UPS? I do not. Doesn't mean that it hasn't. It just doesn't fit one of the patterns that I look for. It doesn't fit your VPOC pattern. So uh, that might uh, take place in, uh, next week, Monday through uh, Wednesday, would be something for us to take a look at, Jim. Okay, well, I really appreciate it. That uh, 179 number is really good, too. So I Perfect. appreciate it. Well, happy Thank to you. help. You bet. Thanks so much for calling. Have a great weekend. That was Jim in Palm Harbor. Uh, we had another question. We've got actually a couple of questions that have come in uh, in the financial area. And the uh, first one is, well, let me actually get to the question. I'm going to go ahead and populate this with the XLF. The first question is coming in from Miles. Miles is just wondering if I have a take on banks right here. You see a few bottoms that showed up in the TD9 bottom scan list that uh, I send out in the newsletter. So that's what he's, he's, he's referring to there. Monthly shows that the index might be breaking out, retesting the breakout level. And what he's looking at is a banking index. And for some reason, let me see, what charts am I showing? White background charts. For some reason, Miles, I'm unable to pull up the uh, banking index, the BKX, on my white background charts. So... If it's okay with you, and the BKX, I think, is the NASDAQ, um, I'm just going to deal with the XLF, which is the financial sector for the S&P 500. And your specific question was, uh, do I see, um, in essence, any kind of a uh, bottom? And when I take a look at the daily time frame, I do not. I don't have any kind of a TD9 count bottom inside of the XLF. So let's go start with the monthly. The monthly as a road momentum indicator top, but price is above the top of its profile, so its real signal to us is neutral. On a weekly basis out here in the XLF, I believe there's a new profile that's forming. I'm going to pop it up on my black background screens out here just to make sure. Yeah, so 3608 is the next level of support. So you got price consolidating with inside the weekly profile. And at this stage here, it's bearish in structure, so price should be able to make its way down to about 3608. As we look at the daily time frame, uh, seven, 
you you're, the it, it shows a TD nine count pattern, but if price were to close where it is right now, that pattern gets negated. So you've had no bottom signal there. Nothing on the 195 minute chart. Price on the 130 coming back to a breakout level. So you understand why price stopped at about 36.99. Could that be a bottom? Yes, but I, I'm going to go back to the daily time frame. And so as long as miles, as long as price remains below that red oscillator and change line, uh, the charts are saying no bottom with regard to the XLF. And if anything, it looks like the XLF probably wants to go target the uh, swing point low from the trading day of March the 8th. There were 114 million shares that were traded down there. So pretty decent volume. But no, I do not have a bottom signal for you. And uh, you say the four hour has a positive divergence on the well, you're looking at the BK. And uh, I don't have uh, the 240 minute chart, you know, for for an index or something in a cash index C or a ETF or an individual stock that's trading the six and a half hours. I really prefer to use these time frames, 195, 130, 65, 30 and 15. And the reason is because they're equally divisible into a six and a half hour day. And therefore, the bars that I look at, the bars that Stevie attends, I like to have all the bars being the same length of time. We'll be right back. fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the tiger's den trading room only at tfnn.com the tiger's den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. I mentioned we had a few requests to take a look at the financial sector. The second one coming from Hector and Patty. And uh, Hector wants to take a look at Wells Fargo Corp. So let's go take a look at Wells Fargo. Uh, he mentions a uh, W. He mentions an A to B equals CD pattern um, out here. So let's just take a look at Wells Fargo and, and see what it is that we can find. The first thing is, Hector and Patty, there's a new profile that is formed today. So your new level of support is 47.25 and your new level of resistance is 49.27. On a weekly basis, price is pulled back and is tested and it's rejected the bottom of its bullish structured weekly profile as well as a trend line. So that looks good. That would be bullish. And on a monthly basis, price is pulled back and tested the top of the monthly profile, old resistance that perhaps has become new support. So now let's go take a look at the other charts here for Wells Fargo. Instead of looking at the eight panel, we'll just think, take a look at things one at a time out here. On a daily time frame, ah, boy, on a daily time frame, no bottom signal other than maybe a double bottom test out here. But price is right at its oscillator and change line. You need to close above the top of the profile to suggest that this thing might get back to its TD9 count top out here that took place on March the 23rd. But with regard to an A to B equals CD, I don't have any kind of A to B equals CD pattern. The one that I would draw would take price down from uh, 60 to about... Uh, right around 30, 30 bucks or so out there. So I'm not going to draw that A to B equals CD pattern in because we don't have it yet that is uh, uh, suggested that's a pattern that is going to form. But on a daily basis, I don't have a bottom signal for Wells Fargo. On a weekly basis, you know, look, price can pull back to support, which it's doing in the case of um, the weekly time frame, but no bottom signal there. You'd prefer to see that, but it, it can be a bottom signal. But typically, Hector, how I like to do it is if the weekly is pulling back to a level of support, it's the daily time frame where I like to see that bottom signal. And we really don't have that out here. If I looked at the monthly time frame chart, the other positive, remember we talked about how price was trading above the top of its profile. The other positive is last month, price pulled back and tested and rejected that green oscillator and change line. So that is actually a bullish signal out here. And maybe over the long haul, just like Miles is looking for a bottom in the banking uh, area and sector, uh, Wells Fargo is uh, giving us some optimism that that may be a likely event. Five-hour time frame chart, I don't have much for you, nor do I on the 240 nor do I on the 120. Again, I'm using not using my normal eight panel charts out here, but again, looking uh, for signals. There is a uh, Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom on a 120-minute chart. That would suggest that price could make a move to 51.76. 60-minute chart says uh, you're in bar number eight right now, but there's not a TD9 count topping signal just yet because it has to make a higher high. And the 30-minute time frame chart Looks uh, pretty good. Actually, looks like this wants to make a run Wells Fargo. That is to about 49.47. So I hope that helps you out. 49.27 is your next level of resistance. That's the top of the new daily profile. Patty and uh, Hector, thanks much for writing in. And have a fantastic weekend. Appreciate, appreciate all your comments. We had a request inside the Tiger's Den from uh, one of the G7 members out there. And uh, G7 wants to take a look at uh, some of the... Uh, some of the shipping stocks. So one of the stocks that he mentions is EURN. So let's go ahead and get that puppy up. This is Euronav. Euronav is uh, trading back to a recent high, that recent high that took place back in January of 2020. The high was one thir was 1321. The high so far this month is 1319. So Pretty easy. If price can take that out, that would be a bullish uh, outcome. Let's take a look at the white background chart, see if there's any other signals. Voila, boom, bang, there is. Nice nice bottom out here, Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottom back on January 24th. Uh, today is going to become bar number eight of a TD9 count. So G7, pattern-wise, this should form a short-term top between today and Tuesday of next week. That short-term top should take price back towards or to its oscillator and change on. It's currently printed 1158. I'm not going to make a call that it's going there just yet, but uh, it looks positive today. It looks like uh, you should see some higher highs, uh, but you could get a top that forms at least short-term between today 
and Tuesday of next week. When I look at a weekly chart for EURN, looks very, very bullish. Price has taken out a prior level of resistance, could even be or should be an A to B equal C to the upside if it's got the volume. We'll check on that in a moment. On a monthly time frame chart, as we pull this back now, uh, 1371 is the magic number. 1379 is resistance. 1371, that is a TD9 count breakdown resistance. That takes us back to January of 2016. So that's going to be your real key level. Now, I mentioned an A to B equals CD to the upside on the weekly time frame. That's if the swing point has been taken out with volume. That swing point had volume. This is the swing point from the week that began October 18th. 7.6 million shares. You're at 25 million shares already right now. So that has uh, been taken out. That A to B equals CD pattern gives us price projections. That price projection, I'm going to use the conservative one. The uh, A point that I'm going to use here is the bottom of August 9th. The high is going to be the top of October 18th, the week that is, and the bottom of January 20th. Well, you're already past the one to one. That's that's a 90 percent. That's not that's not an A to B equals CD. Sorry, that that's just not an A to B equals CD pattern. So I take that back. I should have visually seen that before I started that exercise. I didn't. Oh well. But it does look like this wants to move higher, with the exception of that TD nine count top that should form on the daily time frame. Uh, you also wanted to take a look. Oh, you wanted another one, which one, one was a sting out here, not the performer. STNG is the uh, ticker symbol, not DSTNG, STNG. See if Stevie can type. I don't see what this is doing. So it's somewhat similar, but not exactly. So on a weekly basis, G7, you can see that descending trend line. There's your level of resistance that is lining up with the top of the monthly profile, which is at 2185 or 2199. Let's go take a look at Sting's white background chart, just daily, weekly out here. And on a daily time frame, it uh, looks good. You've got um, no topping signal, price above. Well, you did have wave number seven. I take that back. So what you need to see out here is price needs to close above 2240 to tell you that that pattern has been negated and you're headed higher. But right now, the signal is neutral to bullish on a daily time frame. The weekly chart out here, well, you actually had a TD9 count pattern that formed last week. So that's your resistance level. So what you're really watching for here is that 2240 level. If price closes above that on a weekly basis, then you're headed back to its prior highs, those prior highs being the week of July 2nd and the level of 2467. So you've got a weekly top. You don't have anything on the daily, so just pay attention to it. What you're looking for with regard to the upside move is a close above that um, last week's high out there. So hope that helps you out with regard to both Sting and E. U R N and uh, thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Uh, I believe we've got a caller on the line. It is John in Philly. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Hello, Steve. Thanks for taking the call. My pleasure, as always. Great. Um, wanted to ask you, sir. Uh, the Nasdaq uh, uh, 100 futures currently that June contract is at fourteen thousand four hundred. My question to you, sir, is what do you see as the, the potential, or what are the odds, is it likely or unlikely, that we make new lows on the session under, I think the, the low today is 14.312. Yes. And the more important question is, if that breaks uh, into the close today, what sort of downside projections will you be working with, please? <laughs> okay, so here's what we know. We've got music in our ears. And that says that Stevie has three minutes to figure out the answer for John in Philly. So that's what we're going to do. And uh, so we'll be back in just a few. Please stick with us. Of course, I'd love to hear from you as well at 877-927-6648. We'll be back with John in Philly in just a few. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be 
paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're on the line with John in Philly. His question is, if uh, if we break uh, the lows of uh, basically yesterday or today, uh, what would be our next projection to the downside? And, John, you know, I always like to be able to deliver to you a very succinct answer. In this instance here, um, it's not going to be as succinct. And the reason is because I don't have a clear um, breakout level or area of support that I could identify. What I can share with you at first and let me just do this. Let me just pull this chart over. It's the five-hour time frame chart, John, that I'm focused on. That's a time frame that you like out there, a little bit larger. So we're not going to get the total play-by-play -play out here. But the reason I like right now the five-hour time frame chart is because this did form a TD9 count bottom that is still in effect out there. And it remains in effect unless we see a close below 14, 394.74. And that's the bar from 5 p.m. on April the 6th. And the low out there, that is the low that we were looking at. If we see a close below that, then the TD9 count pattern gets negated, and right now we're trading at 14,397, and this bar here closes at 2 p.m. So uh, we'll know, or you should know, or you'll have some information in about uh, 17 minutes out there. If that level holds, it's not like I'm saying I'm expecting some huge move to the upside. It's just that support will have held. If it fails... If it fails, then what I would be looking for, because of the five-hour time frame chart, it's not where price would head to today, but then what I think is we'd be looking at an A to B equals CD to the downside. And so when I go to that set of, uh, that chart out here, the A to B equals CD, and I'm using kind of the conservative one, would take us down to about 13,761. Now I'm gonna open up the five-hour chart again and see where is the next breakout level here. Well, the next breakout level is way down at the 12,942, so we're not going to use that. I guess the only other thing that I would look at, and you've already done this, I'm sure, on your own, is to take a look at retracement levels. And if I look at, uh, do I have that somewhere? 
Well, it's pretty easy. We're going to do it right right here, right now. And the retracement level is going to be from the low out here. We'll just use that five-hour chart, that low from back on March the 15th, up to the high that was put in. And this is right around the uh, 2 o'clock time frame on the 29th. It's only been a 0.382 retracement. So another real key level that uh, this is dealing with. And this suggests that you'd need to see a close below 14,317 to get that lower price signal to us. And then the target would be the 13831 level. So that's the best that I've been able to come up with out there. I know you'd like more and I'd like to deliver more. This is all that I can deliver. What, what say you, what questions do you have, if any, or what additional information can I try to find for you? Steve, I uh, thank you for that work. Uh, do not feel at all badly that you can't deliver more. Uh, you know me, I, uh, I do my own work and uh, then compare notes when I'm coming up, uh, uh, when I'm coming up empty yeah. uh, or short of what I like personally. So I did my exercise, came up short personally. It's actually heartening to know you've done the same and come up, frankly, unsatisfied yourself. Um, yeah. So uh, we ca always can't get uh, answers to the questions we want. So I appreciate the exercise. And uh, who knows if we're going to make lower lows uh, uh, into the close. I'm just trying to get prepared in that event. Sure, sure. So, you know, and, and here, I, I guess, so if the NQ is going to make lows, the question is, will the ES follow? And so the ES, really the ES and the NQ, for the last couple of days have been pounding the bottom of profile support. And that level is at that 14,391. So my assumption would be close below that profile level is generating some kind of message to us. The problem right, is, right. you know, the problem is that we've got conflicting messages here. Because while the NQ might do that, the ES isn't anywhere near the bottom of its profile, which is 44.52. And the Dow is quite a ways away from the bottom of its profile, 34.320. So I just think we have one of these days where it's, it's partly cloudy. It's not clear to me. Right. And uh, Steve, I'll just repeat uh, for myself, you and your listeners, recall this. Uh, when we look at the, uh, the, the NQs and the, uh, the S&Ps, we often say, well, the NQs are much weaker than the S&Ps. Be very clear. The Standard & Poor's, frankly, is just half the NQs plus half the top uh, 100 in the NYSEs. Um, and, of course, we don't have futures for the NYSE, but we can take a look at the New yes. York Stock Exchange Index and its largest components and see, as Basil Chapman documented very well this week, a large rotation. Uh, so we're seeing selling and liquidation of those large uh, NASDAQ names, and we're seeing some real strength in some uh, 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 New York Stock Exchange, uh, excuse me, New York Stock Exchange names. So yes. uh, we've got this divergence and this rotation. If, in fact, the NASDAQ breaks, the, the S&Ps are going to follow to some extent, merely yes. because the S&Ps are half you know, NASDAQ and half NYSE. So yeah. um, uh, I hope that uh, little observation is of some benefit. Probably not, but we'll see what happens no, in the is. close. And uh, have no. a good weekend, sir. Thank you. Absolutely. And, John, always thanks for calling and thanks for sharing with us your uh, thoughts out there. That was John in uh, Philly. Uh, let's go to our next question. And the next question is coming in from uh, Mike. And uh, Mike writes in, this is Mike in New Hampshire, can we take a look at URA? So we most certainly can. That is uranium. I think uh, we saw on the uh, charts or the uh, actually the uh, – opening the show that uranium was trading higher. So we take a look at URA, straight above the top of its daily profile, Mike, that's at 27.19, straight above the top of its weekly profile, consolidating with inside the monthly. So my initial estimate of where price is going to head will be $30.16. Your question is, considering a long trade and wondering, okay, about a, a possible entry point uh, in long-term resistance areas, think it would reach uh, 36 to 40. Well, $30 because it's the top of the profile for sure. I mean, I think that is absolutely in play. Let me get to my white background charts out here, see if we can find anything for us with regard to URA. If you give me just a moment, 
of course, you don't really have a choice, do you? And we'll take a look at the daily, weekly, and the monthly time frame. So you're looking for an entry point. And, you know, I hate to hear because it's got no topping signal, no topping signal at this moment. It would need a bearish reversal candle, and then you could have a Rhodes momentum indicator top. We don't know whether that will form or not. Uh, it's uh, taken out its wave number seven. It did that yesterday. Continue. It looks like 3092 is where price wants to run to. But is that, uh, an, you know, do you, are you a momentum trader out there? The pullback? Where would you be a buyer of this 2553 if it could get back down there, the bottom of the daily profile? But I don't have any signals to suggest that that's what's going to happen. Here's the reason to stay. Stay. Uh, you're looking for a long position, and just spend more time looking for a long position because you're in bar number eight on a TD nine count. You also happen to be in wave number four. That's letter D. Uh, Basil always likes to believe that there's something else that might happen when you get to that area. So you got two potential topping-ish type signals that say uranium should top between this week and two weeks from now. So that says just uh, be tight. The monthly chart not helping us. Nothing to suggest that it won't get to that 3016 level. But uh, other than an intraday move to the downside, I don't really have a good entry point for you. Those entry points would be 2553, 2636, 2673, and 2719. Steve Roach with TFNN. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious tech, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. we got three stocks to get through in about two minutes' time. The first one is Blackstone BX is the ticker symbol. Uh, the individual is looking for an entry price. When we take a look at the daily time frame, you're going to form bar number five today. Price is just consolidating with inside its daily profile. You're likely entry area might be in the 108 area. Uh, I would watch for a test of the uh, swing point. That's the bottom of its profile and that would be testing the March A swing point out there. So I'd watch for that and ideally you'd like to see some kind of TD9 count bottom form which might take place next week. So I'd be patient on BX. That is Blackstone. When I look at the weekly chart out here, I don't see anything else that's going to help us there. So that's what we're going to go with on the daily time frame for BX. The next ticker symbol that we're going to take a look at is BTU and uh, this is also looking uh, the individual is looking for an entry point here this is uh trading above the top of its daily profile no topping signal here so it looks like it wants to continue to move higher on the daily chart the weekly chart is signaling the same but the price is dealing with resistance that's the top of its profile a close above 2728 you're 2723 right now but a close above 2728 would be a bullish outcome the monthly chart for btu is telling us what it's telling us it wants higher price so everything looks like it wants higher price you'd have to find some type of pullback your entry point could be as 2685 but the ideal area i'd have to say it would be 2319 to 2449 the last one is an entry point for ticker symbol b g r y and we pull this over here the answer is going to be not a zilch zippo nothing yes you are absolutely correct if we take a look at the daily time frame for BGRY, yesterday was the completion of a TD9 count bottom. So you could take an entry, but boy, when I look at the weekly chart here, it says, hey, Steve, what are you even thinking about? You're below your TD9 count breakout level. You're below the bottom of its profile. If anything, the daily says just a counter trend move. And on the monthly time frame, you're below the TD9 count. So the point here. The reason that we go ahead and we use these multi time frame charts is because we really can't just look at one time frame and get a clear picture as to what the market is doing. So right now with regard to BGRY, should you expect a, a counter trend move? Absolutely. Is it the type of bottom you want to buy into? That's not what the weekly and monthly charts say. Folks, thanks so much for being here. Stay tuned for great shows. I'll see you on Magical Monday. Have a fantastic week.